So, Mark, Vegas is getting another professional sports team, the the Horsemen, I think, from the American Basketball Association. Did you see that sexy, sexy logo? Just wondering what number Will Ferrell is going to be because it looks uh, like the Flint Tropics. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like they took Microsoft Paint. Semi pro coming to real life. Like it's almost like it's going to be a Vegas show where they have actors doing like a globe trotter type of. Thing. It was. It's very weird. I do hope they'll they'll bring back the like the 1970s ABA. Of course, this ABA is not associated with the old ABA, but those old kind of retro jerseys. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be really cool. You know, they got to do something unique. I don't know that many people want to go to like minor league basketball. So, <laughs> hey, who knows? But Vegas getting another team. Look at those horsemen go. All right, Mark, let's get into the show. But before we do, don't forget, everybody out there, you can find all of our Vegas content at mtmvegas.com. We'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, smash the thumbs up, but more importantly, leave a comment. We want to discuss all these topics with you. And don't forget to check out Travel Freely, our recommended tool for maximizing your miles and points. That's how we travel for free. We utilize travel credit card rewards. And Travel Freely is a great free tool to help you do that. Now, Mark. Did you hear the big news? Celine is out at Resorts World. Canceled her shows for November and for next year as well. Let's see. November 5th to the 20th and January 19th to February 15th. All those shows wiped out for health reasons. You buying it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, she's getting up there in age, so maybe she's just really tired, exhausted. Um, it does seem like this happens from time to time, but I mean, she's been doing shows in Vegas forever, so you think she'd be kind of used to it so who knows i don't know if you know it's a tactic or if it, it it just seems like how do you delay for that long unless it's something pretty serious so i guess we'll find out more info in the in the near future i would think yeah there were some conspiracy theorists kind of saying maybe the the theater is not ready but they've been practicing in there and apparently all the the production and all the practice is still going on all the rehearsals so it does seem like this is actually her physical health not being there she's Experiencing severe and persistent muscle spasms, uh, which I can imagine cannot be very fun. Those shows are very over the top, too. So there's a lot of physical performance. And she is still planning to go on her Courage World Tour March 9th, uh, 2022. That's starting. As for the tickets at Resorts World, they're going to refund the tickets. And people who bought them will get a pre-sale code when she reschedules her date. So you're not going to get to keep tickets and carry them over to any future dates. Pretty much just canceled. And I think... With that, Carrie Underwood will be the first person to open that theater on December 1st, if I'm correct, or at least the first residency. I'm not sure if they've scheduled like one-off performances in there or Re not. But... Residency. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, at least she's doing, you know, at least like Celine, they're, they're doing they're doing a week of shows or whatever and then coming back. So it's a recurring uh, sort of thing. So better than some of the other residencies, which are like four shows and that's it. And they still call it a residency. Yeah, uh, There's sure. different levels <laughs> of this. But yeah, it's big news. I know a lot of people are are broken hearted here in Vegas. I had tickets to it. I wasn't sure if I was going to keep them or sell them, but now I guess the choice has been taken care taken away from me. We showed if anybody wants to see what the theater looks like last week on the show we gave pictures showed what it looks like on the inside right now. Uh this is sort of sort of a big blow for Resorts World, a, a property that's been struggling a bit. Yeah, I mean we saw the video and the pictures and everything. The the theater looks done, so I don't think that has any merit them saying they're delaying it for that and it's it's a theater. It's not like it's there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, you know, um, as long as the floor doesn't flood in the theater like it did in the hotel. I think I think <laughs> they'll be all right. But yeah, big blow. You know, it just seems like Resorts World can't get out of its own way a little bit lately and things coming, taking longer to open up and, and just not, you know, when they did open, it wasn't quite up to the snuff that they wanted, I'm sure, with, you know, the digital stuff and uh, the gaming app and everything like that. So it's just been kind of like one thing after another. And this would have been something nice to, to see roll through and it's a big name. So it would have been, a, you know, brought attention back to Resorts World. So I guess it still did bring attention back, just not the way they wanted. Yeah. And in some ways, Celine is sort of the original residency, you know, at the Coliseum. This is sort of the person who started that whole trend. And so it was a big name for them to get. That's why she was opening up the theater. And I do hope she can reschedule and that they can get her on the on the books. But as I said, she does have a tour starting in March. So it may be difficult for their her for them to reschedule her anytime uh, soon, but uh, hoping for good news there. Some other big news just across the street. Marriott has officially pulled out of Fontainebleau. 
Now, there's been some like weirdness over the last few months with this. Um, over the summer, uh, there it was on the Marriott website that this property was going to open up, or maybe even a year ago in 2023. Then we know that the property sold a few months ago. The new owners had never confirmed that Marriott was on board, uh, but Vital Vegas had sort of broken the news that the property was going to open in 2023 based on the stuff that had been on the Marriott website for months and months and months already. So that wasn't a new story. But Marriott was still, I guess, technically involved from the contracts from before, and uh, they wanted to make sure that they knew that they're now pulled out. And Jeffrey Soffer, who owns uh, Fontainebleau and is the purchaser of the property, has basically said they want everybody to know that Fontainebleau Development is in charge. My guess is we're going to get the Fontainebleau after all. That'll be the name. I, I certainly think based on everything that they've said, that's the case. All right. I'm excited about it. We, Like I said before, they are starting construction. It's not heavy construction yet, but it does seem like this project is getting the most momentum we've seen since it stalled over a decade ago. Yeah, this one is a, it's a weird property. You know, they we've talked about how, uh, what was it, Luxor that ended up buying, or not Luxor, uh, was it Plaza that ended up buying the furniture from them that they had bought yeah. for the, yeah. So they were at the point where they had furniture like delivered and ready to go. Yeah. And then it just sat there. It doesn't seem, if you're, if you're buying furniture, I feel like you're, that's like kind of one of the last things you do or later on in stages. So you would think that somebody could have come in and, and got this going, you know, within a year or so, but it's been just dragged on and on and on. And, and, you know, it's just kind of like a comedy of errors. I, I hope it does open up soon and it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. You know, now that Marriott's not in it involved, that would have been kind of nice just to have an operator come in that already is, you know, knows what they're doing and kind of can hit the ground running. So we'll see how their management team handles it and, and all that, but hopefully it gets open soon. I mean, we've waited long enough. Yeah. I mean, Fontainebleau in Florida famous property on uh, Miami beach. It's very much a Vegas style property has sort of high end restaurants as a, a resorty kind of property. So they're used to that, but definitely having a big name like Marriott could have been good, but I'm of the theory that Marriott was never on board. Once this thing sold, this is just sort of how they, they came to a conclusion, you know, months later. And it based, based on what they've said, that's pretty much uh, the case. But uh, a lot of people had been counting on that based on that vital Vegas story. A lot of national media had picked up, that the JW Marriott was opening in 2023. I don't believe that was ever the case. Uh, that was just sort of a misunderstanding they all based. On... Freaked out. <laughs> yeah. And to, and to your point about Plaza, yeah, I stayed there when it reopened. So a lot of people don't know the Plaza closed down during the Great uh, Recession, or they closed their hotel down, I should say. And they did a lot of renovations. They renovated the casino and all of the hotel rooms, and they were able to buy all of the furniture from Fontainebleau out of bankruptcy. But they. I remember this. I don't have good pictures of the room or I would put it up here because I've looked for them, but uh, they put the furniture just didn't fit the rooms. I think the rooms may have been renovated since then. I'm not sure, but uh, it was a, uh, it was crazy. Jasmine and I stayed there when they reopened and it was really nice and uh, it was a novelty. And I think that's sort of the beginning of this new era of Fremont street. So yeah, good history downtown and uh, good to see Fontainebleau at least moving forward. Let's get this thing built. And uh, speaking, maybe they can go get a deal on that furniture and bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stains and everything. Hey, I got. Uh, can we do it for ten percent cost? We gotta get this thing open. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just uh, just recycle it. All right. So, have you seen the Aerofile bar that's coming to Area Fifteen? Now, Area Fifteen is this new entertainment complex just across the freeway from the Las Vegas Strip, and they have all kinds of like art installations. Think of it like kind of like an adult amusement park. All sorts of crazy stuff. I haven't been there. I have a good friend who works there, though. But what they're building now is a bar that is basically an observation tower. It goes up 131 feet in the air. 16 riders get to be on it. You going to ride this thing when it opens? Yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it looks I'm great. In. Yeah, it looks cool. Uh, I watched the video of it, and it, it is kind of like unique concept. And I was expecting it to be a little bit more expensive. So I was surprised to see the ticket prices that they're talking about which is, you know, around 20 bucks or whatever, a little bit more if you add in drinks, but it seems very affordable. And, but I had expected maybe you're up there for a little bit. You're only up there for a few minutes, but it'll still be a novelty thing. Something cool, kind of like going to the Strat and and doing the rides at the top and, and stuff like that. And I mean, my only worry would be Vegas gets really windy, so it'd be kind of freaky up there, but I'm sure they'll adjust accordingly or shut it down on days that it, a pool chair will hit you in the face. 
Yeah, I hope they build some more rides uh, along these lines, and I'm glad to see that they're doing it. They describe it as a seven-minute ride that'll lift, lift guests 131 feet in the air, 360-degree panoramic view of Las Vegas and the surrounding areas. And to your point, uh, what's nice is families can do this. Kids 42 inches and above are allowed on it. Tickets will be 18 for adults, 12 for children. Drink packages will start at $26, including your ticket. So uh, those prices do it's not It's like the cheapest, cheapest drink in Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, and who knows uh, what, where it goes from there. The cool thing is your feet are dangling as you go up, and uh, so it does feel very much like you're exposed compared to something, you know, along the lines of, like, an observation deck at, at Circa or, or at Resorts World or something like that. You're out there sort of exposed to the elements, kind of like an amusement park drop tower kind of feeling. So uh, I'm glad to see this, and this company seems to be building these things all over the world. Like I said, I have, a, 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 I have a, some... Some friends who are very excited about this and, and told me that uh, this will be a great experience. So I'm looking forward to it. And I Do have they... some construction update. It's almost finished. Oh. The tower is oh, about okay. three quarters of the way there. It's going to open, uh, they say, in the fall. So uh, we'll see. But I know they're working real hard to get it done. Yeah, I was just going to say, do we do we have any time, type of time frame so I can book my tickets? Because I'll I, I want to check out Area 15 anyways. I've been wanting to. So definitely would go there. And then I, I'll have to get on the the ride for sure. Yeah, for sure. And talk about a ride. How about Formula One coming to Las Vegas? A lot. This is my favorite Vegas party trick, random factoid. If you meet somebody, just say, did you know that there used to be a Formula One uh, race circuit on the Las Vegas Strip in Caesars Palace's parking lot? And in reality, it was Caesars Palace's parking lot at the time. That's where the forum shops are now and where the Mirage is now. And I found some old uh, pictures to, to show you guys. Uh, but there's talk of bringing Formula One back to Las Vegas. The last time it was here was 1982, the year that I was born. And it wasn't very successful because who wants to drive around a parking lot? But this time they're saying the Las Vegas Strip, they would do it right. I was in Macau a few years ago for the Formula One race. I didn't get tickets to the actual race, but I was there and I got to watch the cars go through the circuit. It's a pretty incredible thing to watch. And the energy is is fun. It's very different than anything I've ever experienced, kind of watching a city transform itself. In Macau, they we're able to incorporate some of the iconic casinos in there. Hopefully they'll be able to do the same here. What do you think? Yeah, it's a cool idea. I know they've done this other in other cities and I think Detroit had it back in the eighties and now they have an Indy car race out on bell Isle and they're trying to get it back into the city proper, which is kind of crazy. You think how fast these cars are going and stuff and buildings everywhere and, but they make it work. Um, and I know uh, Formula One and Indy isn't the same thing. I can't tell the difference, but I'm sure somebody will hate me in the comments for for saying that. Uh, <laughs> but it does seem like something that's really cool, unique. It'll bring people in, uh, you know, and it, and it will show Vegas. The cool thing is when they uh, put it up on, you know, on TV and everybody's watching it, you'll see strip views and stuff as they're racing around and everything. So I hope they they pull it off. It'd be really cool. Now, uh, the race, uh, dot com says it's understood that a Vegas race with a street track potentially incorporating the famous strip is one of F1's next major priorities, along with a second Grand Prix in China. They just added a second race in the U.S. They haven't had a, a second race in th they haven't had even two races in the U.S. since 1984. So they just added a Miami race. Vegas would be a third. 1982, the last time they had a Las Vegas race was the last time there were three in the United States. These, like I said, it's an incredible thing to see a whole city transform. I saw it in Macau a few years ago. Hopefully uh, it happens. But also, hopefully you learn something about uh, that old Formula One track because it's a cool party trick. Ask people what they, you know, if they knew a race track used to be on the Las Vegas Strip. Very few people know that, but it uh, looks like it was a great time. <laughs> when you when you say it's in a parking lot, it's almost like a like kids go kart race with bale like uh, hay bales around, and they're just like set up a track like, hey, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, but if you if you know if you kind of know the landscape and you look at it, it went all the way from basically where the start of the forum shops is now, all the way to Spring Mountain Road at the end of Treasure Island. So you can kind of look at where where it went. It went pretty far did, uh, down did there. Did people ever ever have to like park in the backside of that lot? Like, did it ever get busy enough that they had to walk that whole way? I'm sure they had buses and stuff to pick people up, but it's crazy. Before they built up parking garages, that just this open surface parking. Yeah. It's crazy in the heat. Yeah. And it just reminded like the Vegas I grew up in in the 80s. I mean, obviously I was born 82, but but it still had so much empty land everywhere. There were all kinds of empty lots. There was plenty, plenty of gas stations on the slip, still small motels, all the stuff that's just slowly been kind of going away. We still see a little bit of that, like Harmon, 
in Las Vegas Boulevard where that Harley Davidson cafe is and uh, that land uh, Hawaiian marketplace. That land is supposedly being consolidated. I was talking to our, our friend uh, Ed Pizza uh, from uh, Miles to Go the other day, and he also comes to Vegas all the time. And we were talking about perhaps that could be a, a site for the new Hard Rock. So I don't know. I'll just bring that up as a, as a that's completely a rumor. But that land is sort of being consolidated, similar to what's happened throughout all the rest of the Strip. So it'll be interesting to see that. But uh, good to good to see racing come to the Strip. Vegas is becoming a sports phenom. I mean, just look at the last five years, what's happened. I would have never thought, like, just one after the other, the A's are saying after the World Series that they will announce their final list of stadium sites for Vegas. They're still negotiating with Oakland, too, so they're playing us against each other. But, um, I mean, we could have a – that could be the next big sports announcement. Who knows? Put a roof on it if you're going to do it. <laughs> Please. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about this before, but McCarran International Airport – has officially changed to Harry Reid International Airport when it comes to like the official air traffic control and stuff. But in order to change all the signage and everything else, they needed to raise over $4 million. And that's been done now, or at least it's been partially done. So the first phase is going to be, I think, like $4.8 million. That's been raised. That will take care of all the signage outside everywhere else. And then they need another couple million to do the inside, but it's starting. So yeah, the next time you're there, you'll probably start to see these signs slowly change over. Nobody cares or will notice. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think people will care. I, I think I, I'm I'm sort of torn. I wish that they would have changed the the name, spending all this money to Las Vegas International Airport because yeah. I've said this before that the city stands for itself. Pat McCarran, who was named after a lot of problematic history in his politics, um, a lot of. Uh, issues if you want to look him up uh, not a not a popular guy so i'm perfectly fine changing the name but las vegas is such an iconic place i feel like it deserves its own name but harry reed was a very powerful senator did a lot for people in southern nevada he's very popular here at least among a, a certain group of uh political people and unpopular among others yeah. but <laughs> but who's to say in 20 30 years something doesn't come out of the that's why you don't name things after people anymore yeah. like i think we should learn that nobody is what we think they are. To, at, that's what it seems like, at least. So who knows? That might have to get renamed again. Just name it after the cities. Everybody knows. Then it's easy. You know, like it, they'll know. Vegas, like you don't need a name before it. Just call it Las Vegas International. There you go. Done. Nope. Las Vegas Harry Reid. Now, speaking of that, the I was I flew into town a couple of weeks ago. I was a couple of days ago. I was uh, in the Caribbean and, and doing some some cool stuff. But the all the flights coming into Vegas are so packed. I had like a delay. I was trying to get rebooked onto other flights. Everything sold out. EDC is this week. And I decided to kind of like look at prices. Well, first I saw some video of what the airport was like. Just look at this. I've never seen Terminal 3 security this bad. And it's just basically this week is going to be a mess. I looked at like the weekend rates on Caesars. I'll pop them up here. Saturday night, everything is sold out. I think Flamingo was the only option at close to $400 a night. Even Thursday nights, Friday night, even Sunday night across the board, really high. And then it starts to kind of taper off after that. So this is not the weekend to be here. This is even worse than the iHeart uh, Radio Festival thing a few weeks ago. Uh, this is, uh, yeah. Uh, 400 busy, busy for week. Flamingo. Flamingo. I, I might actually take up the travel lodge at, at that point. You know, Four, <laughs> yeah. 400 for Flamingo is a bit of a stretch there. Wherever you can uh, lay your head is at that point where you're paying 400 for Flamingo, you, uh, you, you start calling up old friends who live in town. Can I, can I crash on your couch? I don't know, but uh, it's, it's certainly going to be busy and a lot of good people watching. We've talked about this before with EDC. So if you are on the strip, uh, look out, it'll be very interesting people. A lot of people having fun. Sometimes uh, I think a lot of them are on ecstasy, sort of just floating around uh, having fun, but nonetheless, uh, I think they're a fun, interesting like, group of people. It's like uh, Halloween, but everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> now, this past Sunday was the worst Sunday in 35 years for sports books because everybody that was a favorite one, is that right? What 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 happened? Yeah, uh everybody that, you know, usually like heavy favorites like plus 6, plus 7 and especially in NFL like they're trying to get it where both sides hit, you know, you don't want all favorite cuz everybody always bets the better team. That that's just, you know, the the normal gambler that isn't big into sports betting will be like Oh, the Cowboys are way better than uh, the Lions. Let me take, you know, if they're giving up 10, who cares? Let's do it, you know. And so usually money tends to go towards a little bit heavier on 
the favorites and the fact that they all hit really, you know, did, did the Vegas casinos in the sports book app and, you know, they paid out a lot more money than they took in, which they probably should have shifted the line some, but that's just the way it usually works. And they're hoping to get, you know, closer to half or whatever. And earlier in the year, all the dogs were winning. So that helped them out. So I guess it, it will even out at the end of the year, but still it was interesting to see that it was that crazy. Yeah, it does tend to even out, right? I mean, this is what they, they do for a living. What's interesting, and we've I've seen this covered sort of on Twitter. I don't know if we've talked about it here, but a lot of these sports betting apps, when they find out you're a good player or a good better, they tend to limit your bets, which is really frustrating to a lot of players. So they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. I don't believe Vegas sports books tend to do that. Um, so it's a little bit different. I know Circa uh, sports are always, they're always talking about that on Twitter about how people are limiting uh, stuff like that. But I, I yeah, wonder... I think- I think if you're a big gambler and you bet sports, there there will be casinos in Vegas that will tell you you're not welcome there anymore. So I think that's what Circus playing up like, hey, we'll we'll still take your money type of it's thing. It's interesting that they're making a, a business model out of it and it's working for them because they're so in touch with the stats. They're building a big brand and it's not like they don't know what they're doing. So it's interesting to see that some of these smaller, more nimble sports books are able to to deal with these bets. And some of the bigger ones are sort of cutting all the big players off. But nonetheless, if everything sort of goes one way, um, it's going to be a bad day. They, they, it's funny because you would think with like certain fights or certain other th- events where people are betting one sided, you would see you would see that. But I guess if they, I guess their their job really is to to sort of keep the odds where they're getting kind of action on both sides, right? Yeah, they want to try to keep it somewhat close to even so that they just make money off of the 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 vig or you know the the fee even even when you win you don't win all your money. So that like if you bet a hundred dollars, you're not gonna get paid out a hundred dollars most of the time, depending on the odds. But on a game that's you know split evenly, it's gonna be you'll get paid like ninety-five dollars, ninety-four dollars, something like that. So that's the money they make. They want bets on both sides, they use the losers money to pay you and they keep a little percentage. So that's what they're shooting for most of the time. All right, are you excited? Uh, we got some some restaurant news now. Caesars continues to like double down on all their celebrity chefs uh, under El Dorado. We've seen you know Vanderpump's coming with a with a new restaurant. We've seen them expand other offerings. Nobu kind of going in everywhere, and now Bobby Flay just opened a new burger place in Caesars Palace. Not to be confused with the Bobby's Burger Palace, which you mentioned a few weeks ago is abandoned now, kind of outside Waldorf Astoria. That was supposed to be like a uh, more of a little bit of a higher end burger place that I guess it, it didn't failed. Look like it, <laughs> yeah. So, well, compared to this, so Bobby's Burgers, not to be not to be confused with Bobby's Burger Palace, because you know you can never have too many. Maybe come up with a different name. <laughs> yeah. it, Maybe call it Flayed Burger or something. There you like, go. Switch it up well, a bit. And the whole concept is like specialty sauces and shakes and like crunch burgers and like all this sort so, of craziness. Shake Shack with Bobby's face on it, basically. Something like that. But the reviews aren't good. The first location opened at Caesars Palace this year. Two and a half star reviews on Yelp. But who knows? But they're they're going to be bringing it to the food hall at Harrah's and to Paris, Las Vegas, uh, coming in the next uh, few months. I think I think uh, later this year at Harrah's and then next year at Paris. So this concept, which isn't doing all that well as far as reviews, is already going to be at three three places. And it's just a fast, casual walk-up order fast food type place i mean it's a burger but it's probably expensive right (laughs) i know they're not exactly the same thing but if the one couldn't make it in front of waldorf where that was one of my complaints of saying there is there's not a lot of immediate food options outside of you know the the couple restaurants inside waldorf but which are all expensive that's like you have a captive audience that could easily you walk out the front door you're right there like it would have been perfect you if you if you can't make it there i feel like it's probably just not a good concept (laughs) <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, at least they've kind of dumbed it down to the to the food court. And I wonder where it's going in Paris. It says it's going to be near where the Nobu is. I'm kind of assuming at this point Nobu is going in where Martirano's was. But it's going to be somewhere on that walk where all those restaurants are going back, um, you know, in that quiet area. It's a nice area. So uh, who knows? Yeah, I did see there was a couple of vacant, like across from uh, Martirano's, there was like a vacant okay. restaurant. So maybe that's where it'll go. Yeah, it's, it's just another reminder that all of this is changing in Bally's. We still don't know what's what's going in there. But they if you know about any of like the Caesar stuff, anytime you see a celebrity chef like Giada or Gordon Ramsay or Bobby Flay, Caesars actually runs those restaurants with their own employees, their own everything. And basically the chefs get a percentage off the top. They help to cultivate the menu 
and then they get a percentage of revenue off the top. So those operators, they're not operating the restaurant. Caesars is operating these restaurants. Think of these as like in-house restaurants with fancy, fancy names. All right, one last bit of restaurant news. I would love to say the title I put on the rundown for it, but I won't do that. But Dick's at Excalibur, a place that is known for insulting you, has come up with the ultimate insult. They're charging a resort fee on their bills. I love that they call it a resort fee. I mean, at least they're not calling it some other craziness, a COVID fee or whatever. But let's not do this, Dix. Let's uh, let's not eat there. Maybe, maybe they call it like we're all think a resort fee. Maybe they're calling it a resort fee because Dick's last resort. So they're just like, hey, let's play it up. And maybe people will think it's kind of funny. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that, that's what they're going for. Because everybody, when you hear resort fee, you think of hotel. And that's what a lot of the comments were. But it just came to me. Maybe it's because it's Dick's last resort. So they're like, hey, it's a little fee to hang out inside Dick's, you know, to keep we keep it semi clean in here. <laughs> You make a good point. I had never actually considered that it was a resort fee because it's Dick's last resort, but nonetheless, it's still not a good fee. We still need to avoid it. I was at their opening of their free, their Neonopolis location, so uh, I I like the concept, but I'm not going to do that. I've never eaten at one. Have you eaten at one? Don't they insult yeah, actually, you? Yeah, right? actually Yeah, they insult you. It's kind of, you know, there's a couple different uh, brands that do that and I've actually been to the one at Excalibur before. We've had dinner there. The food is not good you're you're supposed to be there for like the atmosphere kind of like having fun and joking and i remember the prices were pretty high already and uh, my buddy ordered like a bud light or something and the guy brought it in this special mug glass even though he's like hey the can would have been you know like 10 bucks and the special whatever you brought me was like 25 30 dollars like you don't just automatically go to the most expensive option. That's hilarious. So he didn't it. order that. They just brought yeah. him the, the $30. Yeah. Oh my God. And you'd like, you think you'd confirm that. Like you automatically, you start with the lowest option and be like, Oh, or did you want the special? No, he just brought it. And then he, because they know you don't want to ask because like, they're going to just insult you if you do. So <laughs> you, they can call you cheap, you know, but yeah, uh, vital Vegas said that they charge 75 cents for ice water there. So that's another reason probably to avoid that. If you can't even get free water. Yeah. Uh, yeah can't even cool. get free ice. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> By Dix. All right, and that's going to do it for this week's show. Hope to see you guys in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you next time. See you next week. <laughs>